Hello, this is Arthur Nix. In this class is using the keyboard shortcuts for greater efficiency. And of course, we're talking about using keyboard shortcuts in heavy bid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a PowerPoint presentation and then we're going to get into heavy bid and show the different uh, shortcuts that are available. We're going to concentrate on the alternate key. This is the basis of most of the shortcuts in heavy bid. There's a few others, the control key, but most of them you're going to see is started with using the alternate key. What's best is that you develop a workflow that works for you. Don't memorize all the shortcuts. Don't try to use all the shortcuts, but use the ones that's going to make you the most efficient and the most productive. Of course, we're going to look at the main screen shortcuts. We're going to look at the keystroke shortcuts that come off of the main screen so that you can get into the individual um, commands of heavy bid. We're going to cover the tab, shift tab, the escape key, the index field, um, indexing up and down, and of course the F4 key in heavy bid. And we're going to concentrate on the shortcuts available in tree view. Uh, you're going to see that your efficiency is going to be maximized if you can develop a workflow in tree view and concentrate using that. The other shortcuts will help you, but the tree view is, is going to be the one that's going to give you the maximum efficiency in, tree, in uh, heavy bid. And of course, we'll be using the alternate key uh, in, throughout this tree view, uh, using the tree view shortcuts. We're going to talk about the tree view sequence and uh, how you go back and forth from the different panels in tree view. Um, we're going to talk about the selection, looking up uh, keywords in tree view. We're going to uh, also look up activities using keyboard shortcuts and then the uh, look up um, crews, look up productions. Uh, production productivity factors. We're also going to be uh, using uh, the pop-ups throughout the tree view and also looking up individual resources, doing a search using keyboard shortcuts. So, and we're going to look at navigating the tree view, so getting you back and forth from the different views using a uh, using keyboard shortcuts. We're also going to look at the index field, uh, some more basic keystrokes, uh, you know, like alternate K for OK, so that you don't have to continually click on individual buttons to go on to the next uh, command. So in summarize, uh, we're going to look at uh, mastering some keystrokes that's going to help you uh, be the most efficient. Uh, we're going to concentrate in tree view, and then we're going to look at um, you know the lookup commands and the activity code book and the uh, material code book, as well as looking at some of the other uh, individual keyboard shortcuts that you can be used in bid summary and bid pricing. So now we're going to go into heavy bid and start reviewing the available keyboard shortcuts. So now we're in heavy bid and I'm going to go over the keyboard shortcuts and you can follow along and this is a hands-on type class and I expect you to follow along and use the keyboard along with me and the estimate that we're going to be in is the AN-UTIL1. So I go up to File and Open, look for the AN and all the estimates, dash UTIL1. And that's the estimate we're going to be using in this class. So first of all, just to go over some, some basics here, to get to the top, you notice we have these commands along the top right here. And we want to use our keyboard to access this, so we go alt Alt, and then the letter appears up here. You notice the letters, and that will be what you will press to get into that one. So if I go Alt, T, and then T again, I will get into Tree View. Let's do that again. Alt, T, and you notice the T is visible this time, and I get into my Tree View. 
Now we'll come back to this and concentrate on the tree view some more, but let's go over some other basic ones that we can use this alt key for. Uh, the one uh, I use a lot is the alt E, and if you press it quickly, the CM, change material prices, this is a great screen. And just let me pause here a minute. If you've never seen this screen before, and now this is not the local material screen. This is much different. Uh, before you leave UGM, you need to find out and put this screen into your workflow because this is a very critical screen uh, if you are using heavy bit. So again, that's going to be Alt, E for edit, and then just press the keys quickly, CM, and you get into there. Now the one also, you can go Alt, U, S for summary. You notice I pop right into the summary. If I want to run a summary, I go Alt, N, and then I have to hold the alternate key down this time, and you notice I will run it. I can all go, all, you notice at the bottom, if it's underlined, that it will, uh, that's my shortcut that I press when I, when I, after I press the alternate key. Now there is a Microsoft um, setting, uh, or setting in Microsoft Windows that activates this. So uh, you do need to have, if you don't see this down here, underline, then you need to go call or support and we and they will walk you through how to uh, set windows to show that underline in heavy bid. Of course, it will probably show it in your other programs too. Now, if I want to go to pricing, I go Alt U, and I don't have to hold the alternate key for the top ones. And then, of course, I go to P for pricing. Now we get a underline yes, underline uh, with the no. And I do not have to press the alternate key this time. I just have to press the yes if I want to go out to my pricing screen. So now I'm in the pricing screen. If I want to get out of the pricing screen, all I have to do is press escape. All right, so that's pretty easy. Any of these tabs you can quickly get out of by just pressing escape. Um, if I want to back up, I go alt file, back up, and then you notice single estimate. Now at this point, there is no quick way to get down to finish. I just tab through real quick and I press, then I just press enter and okay. And you notice that it makes my backup. So pretty quick, if you just don't want to take your keys off the keyboard, you can make a quick backup. Um, You can uh, also come down here and uh, Alt A, and you notice the A is the is the HCSS. I call it the HCSS ball at the top, and that was, is where you can navigate. I can just use my down arrow keys, and those are the last twenty estimates that you're in. Now, as soon as I take my start keying down, uh, you notice it goes away. I go Alt again A. And then I get the letter. So if I want to go to, for instance, the third estimates, I just have to press three at this point, and it will go out to that estimate. So it's a pretty quick way to navigate uh, between the estimates that you use. I'm going to go back now. Alt, A. I know the one I want to use is the two. And now I'm going to go back to the one that we were in. Now we're going to go into the tree view. So, so I want you to go into the tree view. Again, that's going to be Alt and T and T for tree view, if you haven't already done so. And we're now going to go, first of all, just cover the basic navigation in tree view. Now, if you're familiar with heavy bid, you know the best way to navigate in terms of going field to field, let's say I'm right here, is use the tab key, not the enter key, but the tab key. Why do we use the tab key? So we can go shift tab to go backwards. You cannot go backwards with the enter key. It will also allow you to keep one hand on the mouse. Uh, that's another reason that I like the tab key. The tab key is the, is the basic navigation key 
for any type of a database field uh, program, which heavy bid is. Now, we can also come down here if we're on a activity. If I come back over here and I go alternate view to get back to my tree view, my uh, view over here on the left hand side, you notice there's my view side. And then I can open up and using the right arrow key of my keyboard, I can open up as I navigate down. I click on a bid item, I right click or I can left click to close it back down. So this is a nice way to go through your bid item list here. Now I can also go and use my index field. What is an index field? Well, when I'm in, for instance, an activity field like this, where I have exi existing activities, I can use my page up and page down uh, keys. So right now I'm on a page down and you notice I'm starting to page down the, the or, or go down the estimate. It automatically goes to the next activity. What if I did that right here in the bid item? So I'm going to go up here to the bid item field and do the same thing. Page down and you notice now I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm just going bid item through the activities and then into the next bid item. So they do the identical things here. Um, and of course, there is no way to collapse all this. You do have to just click this so that you can go back to the main screen right here. In order to navigate the individual sections of the tree view, you want to be in one of them, first of all. I'm going to be over here in the view side. If I want to go to the bid item, I could just click on alternate key and get to my bid item. I could then page down. Of course, that is my index field. I can go alternate A to get to my activity, which also creates a blank activity field right here. So then now I can go and uh, input another activity. I'm going to go ahead and page down here. Now to, uh, as you can see, to get to my crew field, I go alt C, alt P for productivity, and then from here or anywhere on the screen, if I go Alt D, that gets me down to the actual resource portion of the screen or detail. Now at this point, if I want to create a new line, I just have to go F11, the F11 key, and that creates a new line. So um, if anything you get out of this uh, class is the alternate D is the shortcut to get down to the bottom of the screen. So here I have Alt-V, I have Alt-A, I could page down, Alt-D, and then Alt-V again. Kind of a circular motion here. So let's do a bid item now. So I'm going to come down here to bid item 60, and I'm going to delete this uh, Furnish Install RCP, and we're going to redo it. And so I'm just going to click here. And the actual delete in the keyboard is, all, is not alternate D, but control D. Control D is the delete. And that will work. And then I press Y, and that will get rid of that. I'm in my bid item. I press Enter or Tab to get to my activity. At this point in time, I'll use my F4 key. My F4 key. And that will give me a pop-up into my activity codebook. So here I am in the bid item, bid item 60. The activity has been deleted. I just press enter or tab to get to my activity. At this point, I will go and choose, use my F4 key to do a lookup. So I go F4, and there's my activity codebook. Of course, a lot of people will start navigating down the activity codebook, but this is very slow and inefficient. What you want to do is come down here and use the search. So I go Alt-A, and I'm going to be searching here for the 24-inch RCP. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You don't want to be very detailed in your search. For instance, you don't want to type in 24-inch RCP. Uh, either type in RCP, 
or 24. In this case, I'm going to go RCP. Now, over here on the right, you notice the find. So I'm going to go Alt F for find. And then it gives me all the instances and it puts my cursor down here. Now, obviously, I'm going to use the 24 inch. So I just arrow down to the 24 inch. Now, I haven't selected this yet. So I just press enter. And you notice it brings me right to my 24 inch. Now, had I chose something else like the uh, RCP, it would have probably brought me up to that top header there. And then I would just arrow down. Now, to check this box and bring it into my estimate, I just use my space bar. Uh, so you notice the space bar will select and unselect. So I don't have to use my mouse to select the box. And then look over here on the right hand side. There's my alternate K or I can tab now and tab through this and type in, for instance, my quantity or my crew. But I'm going to do that later for the crew. And I just typed in the quantity and I'm going to go alternate K. So here I am on the activity. I got my quantity in here. I'm going to come down here to my crew. Again, I'm going to use the F4 key to look it up. Now, if I know it, for instance, I think this is the U, there's my drainage crew. I'm going to get anything that any letter that I populate with, it would, if it exists, it would come up. Uh, obviously, there's my C crew. My B did not exist, so it gave me an error there. U would be my drainage crew. Uh, let's just do that right now. I'll go U. There's my drainage crew, and I press enter, and it will bring in my drainage crew. Now, for a productivity factor, I can go uh, F4 again, and I can see my uh, productivity factors that are available. I could down arrow, but the best thing to do is memorize these. They're very short uh, list. It's a very short list, and also you're probably going to use maybe three or four of these in your normal workflow. Um, for instance, I don't expect anyone to use the dollar, you know, you, uh, the other one that would be kind of unusual would be the crew hours. Um, maybe the, uh, a few of the others, if you're not into the man hour type calculations, you probably would not use those. So, in this case, I'm going to use the UH. I could also just type that right in. There's no need to keep popping up, popping up, arrow down. All I have to do come in here is just UH and I'm done. At this point in time, you always want to use the tab key. Never use another key, you know, the inner key to go left or right. Um, you might skip something. I have seen people do that and... Um, and you do get sometimes some erroneous uh, results. So you notice I have units per hour. I'm going to put in here, let's put in here, oh, 20 feet an hour. That gives me uh, in a 10-hour day. You notice that's going to give me two hour, 200 units per shift. I can also, at this point in time, again, use my F4 key. And I can go in and indicate another calendar right or another workers comp code so i just come down here and i get a pop-up for my workers comp code now you can't see all of that with this uh, but that would be my workers comp code if i continue tabbing i come down here where of course i can input anything i want into the fields the productivity fields there and it will back calculate into my productivity. Now, again, what do I want to do to get to the bottom for the detail? I go alternate D and then F11. I use my F11 key to give myself a new line here and I go F4 again. And I get a pop-up into my system-wide codebook. Now, the shortcut of this is not alternate A. It's alternate S. So I will go alternate S. I will type in my 
24 this time. I'm not going to use RCP. I'm just going to go right to the 24. And alternate F for find. And of course, it found two 24s, and I want this one. Now, the same thing occurs with the material code book uh, pop-up or the selection screen as the activity. It gets me into it, but it hasn't actually selected it until I hit the space bar. And then spacebar again, unselect. Now, if I'm done at this point, I just go alternate K. And that will bring it in. And then if I want, if it didn't bring in a price, I could come down here and put in a price. So it's pretty easy to go through. It does seem like at this point, it takes you longer. But once you start using the searches and the keyboard shortcuts and use them consistently, especially if the material's already in the activity and the crew's already in the activity. Um, all you have to do is select the activity and you're done. Let's go over another example now. Let's say we want to install a piece of RCP pipe, maybe just temporarily for the clear and grub item. So we can get, a, 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 let's say, a driveway in. So I'm going to go Alt-V. Notice my hands don't come off the keyboard. I just arrow up to clear and grub, and I press enter or tap. At this point, you remember, I'm going to go F4 to pull up my activity code book. I'm going to go uh, the alternate A to do the search, and I'm going to type in, let's say we want some RCP, but we're not sure yet, so we're going to come down here and we're going to use a 15 inch RCP. So remember, I press enter and then I go ahead and use my space bar. At this point in time, I just have to go alternate K. And you notice it brings it in. Now, I'm not going to use the 12 inch here, so I'm just going to, the 12 acres, I'm just going to say this is going to be, oh, let's say, we want to put in uh, 30 lineal feet of pipe. Now remember that we're going to use the drainage crew. There it is. I, just, I know it's U. And all my U's pop up. And I just go ahead and press enter. And in this case, I'm just going to say uh, units per shift. And I'm going to put in here 60, which will give me half a shift. Now... I just go alternate D to get to the bottom, and then I can go, I, I can get a clear line, or I can go right into my code book. So I'm going to go into my code book right here, into my materials. The only downside of, of just immediately not having a, a clear line and then going to the code book is it doesn't get me directly into the system wide materials. I go alternate S, and then I type in RCP. I come down here, and I get my 15-inch RCP space bar, and I'm done. So you can see it's a little quicker. I'll come over here and just put a price in here. And then to get back to my bid items, I go alternate V. So once you get used to this, it does get pretty quick. And it is very efficient. I have timed it, and it's much quicker than going and then clicking down all the menus, trying to find individual activities, individual uh, crew, you know, the crew um, code, and then the material code. So let's look at some of the other shortcuts here. On the right-hand side, you notice these icons, and if I press the alternate key, and, the, and if I number down one, two, three, four, all these can be activated by using Alt and the number, the uh, number down. So, for instance, if I want to see the cost of the activity, I go Alt three, and there it is right there. Or Alt C. Let's do that again. Alt three. If I want to go to my what if scenario, I go Alt W. All right. If I want to go close this. I just close it. If I want to see the bid item cost, Alt-2. And there's my bid item cost. 
Close that, Alt-C. And one that uh, you might use a lot, uh, <clears throat> depending on what you do, is the Modify Crew. So I can come down here and go Alt-4, and there's my Modify Crew. And then if I want to copy this, the Modify Crew, to another crew, I just go Alt-P, and now I, got it, I get into that menu. So a lot of things that I can do here. Uh, I'm just going to cancel out of that and close out of that. Um, now let's look at the note fields. I can go Alt N and start typing in my note. And then I go Alt C to get back into my, um, my tab there. So Alt N, my note there, Alt C to get back. Any of these other tabs up there, the, the report groups uh, I can get into, uh, the schedule analysis, the miscellaneous, all can be done with the alternate key. Um, so this also encourages you to, to do the notes as, you know, the notes are a little more, red, you know, if you have to click on it, you're not so unlikely to do the notes. Um, in the, this, is, this is at the activity level. I don't know of a shortcut to get to the bid item level notes. Um, so you would have to click on that to get into that, that field. All right, let's look at some others. The, uh, let's go to the summary. So let's go Alt, U, and then S for summary. And of course, I can go down this list here. Also, I can navigate any of these other tabs with the Alt key. So I can go to my add-ons and get directly into my add-ons or B for bond. Uh, also, uh, don't forget about the override tables here. And if you've never used this screen, I would encourage you again, before you leave uh, the user group, to find out more about this screen and what it can be used for. Um, now to check something, if you notice I'm on the item here, and once I'm in that field, I can just use my space bar and it will check that box. And then I can tab over and put something into that field. So in this case, it would be a portion or all of the add-ons that I would put into that to, um, to do a spread override. So I'm gonna go back to my totals tab here, get to the main one. So that just shows you some of that. And remember to run my spread, I go alternate P to run my spread or to run my summary alt in right here. So let's go in now to the pricing screen. So I go Alt, U, and then P. And then Y, remember I don't have to press the, the alternate key for that. And of course I can page up and, and I have to just be in the column and page up and page down to put in my prices here. And it goes down, you know, treats it like a spreadsheet. It goes down to the next cell. So that's another uh, feature here. Uh, as terms of the uh, shortcuts, you look at the bottom. I can get my statistics with a alternate A, and that's very handy. And then once I'm here, I can page up and down. This is an indexing field. So I can page up and down and go through this list. Alt-C closes. I can also go and go to my closing account routine, Alt-L, there's my closing account. Uh, I can also go to my plus minus adjustments right here. So all these screens are quickly accessed with just a few keystrokes um, in here. Um, I can go to the freeze and freeze something quickly. You notice I just go Alt-Z and then it's frozen. Or if I'm in, if I want to make it a closing account, Alt C, and now it's a. Oh, I was on a froze. I can go Alt C, and uh, oh, I have a package alternate on. Let me go up to one. I can go Alt C, and then now that's a closing account. So again, look for the the letter in parentheses or the underlined letter in this menu. Alt B will give me my subtotals. Now, if, you, if you're not aware of this, if you have another screen, you can go place this on the other screen 
and it will keep your subtotals live for your estimate. And the same for the note screen in the tree view. Uh, the note screen for the activity can be placed on another screen and be kept active and it will navigate. It will, it will refresh itself as you go down here. I'll show you if I go, uh, down here to another activity, you notice it's automatically refreshing itself. So that's something that has nothing to do with the keystrokes, uh, shortcuts, but it, it is a nice feature of heavy bid. Now that you can have the notes in another screen and just click over there and type in a quick note. So that pretty much sums it up for the keystroke uh, shortcuts. Again, uh, you know, to activate them, just play around with them, select the ones that you want to use. I would suggest starting with the tree view, focus there and then expand out maybe to the summary screen, to the pricing screen, uh, and then to some of these other menus uh, at the top and once you start training your fingers so that you don't have to think about it you'll be amazed how quick uh, you'll you'll be able to navigate through heavy bid